In this lesson, we're going to talk about rational expressions and how to simplify them. Basically, a rational expression is an expression of the form a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So basically, we're going to be dividing polynomials. So one thing to know here is that a rational expression is in simplified form when the numerator and denominator have no common factors other than one. So um, if you remember um, talking about that concept of extraneous solutions, we have something similar right now. It's not the same thing, but this is called an excluded value. An excluded value is a value of a, um, of a variable for which a rational expression is undefined. So when your denominator is zero, you have an excluded value. So we're going to talk about that in this lesson too. So these are the steps on how to solve rational expressions. Step one, you're going to fully factor both the numerator and the denominator. Step two, you're going to determine the excluded values. Step three, you're going to cancel out factors in the numerator and denominator. And then step four, you're going to combine the final factors by the FOIL method or um, the, I'm just distributing them back into them together. Now, what I really want you to pay attention to is <clears throat> step one and step two. It is very important that step two is done immediately after step one. And I will explain that at the end here. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first two examples. So these are very basic um, rational expressions. And we're going to follow step one. And we're going to go ahead and factor both the numerator and denominator. So if, um, you can see here that the numerator is simplified. But my denominator is not. So if I wanted to simplify the denominator, I would end up with, I could pull out um, a 3, and I would be left with 2n minus 3. Okay? And my numerator, I can't simplify any further, so I'm just going to leave it as is, 2n minus 3. All right, at this point, I want to go ahead and I want to determine any excluded values. Here is how you determine an excluded value. I'm going to take the factors that are in my denominator. So I have a 3 and I have a 2n minus 3. And I'm going to pull them off to the side and I'm going to set them e both equal to 0. So when you have a number out by itself, then that is just, um, it's finished. You're not going to actually do anything. But let me show you what to do with this one. 2n minus 3, I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and solve for my variable n. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to get 2n equals 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. n is equal to 3 halves. <coughs> so what this means is that if n is 3 halves, that will make my denominator 0. Because, I'm, let me just go ahead and explain this. So if I have 2 times 3 over 2 minus 3. So I basically I just plug that back in for n. 2 times 3 over 2 gives me 3. Minus 3 will give me 0. So this number right here would give me a 0 in the denominator if that were the n. This right here is called an excluded value. Now, going back to the 3. The 3, I can't really set 3 equal to 0. It doesn't really work. But if that 3 happened to have an x next to it, 3x equals 0, that would be a different story because then I could divide both sides by 3 and I would get x is equal to 0, which would be an excluded value. But in this case, it's not, so we're not actually going to look at it. All we're going to focus on is the 2n minus 3. Now that we have our excluded value, I want to list that excluded value, and then I want to move on to step 3. I'm going to go ahead and cancel off any factors that are the same. So I have 2n minus 3 and 2n minus 3. So those are completely eliminated. And I'm left with 1 over 3, so 1 third. So if I were to simplify this expression, my answer would be 1 third. My excluded values would be 3 over 2. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. All right, let's take a look at this next one. <clears throat> you might be looking at this thinking, hmm, that looks very familiar. That looks like a difference of squares. And you're right. The top is going to simplify into x plus 12 and x minus 12. 
the bottom, I can go ahead and I can pull out a three, right? I'm sorry, three X, and I'm left with <coughs> X minus 12. All right, this is a great example here. So now at this point, since I've factored everything, I need to determine my excluded values. So my excluded value for 3x, I'm going to set that equal to 0. And if I solve it, I'm going to get x is equal to 0. So that is one excluded value. But my other one, x minus 12 is equal to 0. If I add 12 to both sides, x is equal to 12. That's another excluded value. So my excluded values, I can even go ahead and label them at this point. X cannot equal zero. Oh, I meant to put that over here. X cannot equal three halves over here. So X cannot equal zero and X cannot equal 12. So those are my excluded values. Now let's go ahead and simplify it. I have X minus 12 and X minus 12. And I can cancel those out. I'm left with X plus 12 over 3x. And I can't simplify a binomial with a monomial. So this is actually going to be my simplified answer. So that's my solution and these are my excluded values. Going back to this original one, let me, let me fix that up here. My excluded values for this one, I always like to say that n cannot equal 3 halves in this case. So if n was 3 halves, it would be an excluded value making that denominator 0. Okay, let's go ahead and bump it up just slightly here. All right, let's go ahead and simplify each of these expressions and state the excluded values. So, <clears throat> first of all, we have to go ahead and factor both of these. So let's go ahead and factor the first one here. I have x squared minus 2x minus 80. Using my factoring technique um, from trinomials from a, a couple lessons ago, I need to go ahead and factor that. You're probably getting really good at these at this point. So go ahead and find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 80, and then two numbers, those same two numbers need to add up to give you negative 2. So I came up with negative 10 and positive 8. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this into x minus 10 and x plus 8. Okay? Now, this is being divided by x minus 10. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as x minus 10. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and state my excluded values. My excluded values, x cannot equal. If I look at x minus 10 and set it equal to 0, I know it's going to be the opposite number. So x cannot equal positive 10. So since I have my excluded value, I can go ahead and now simplify. x minus 10 and x minus 10 cancel out, and I'm left with x plus 8. So x plus 8 is going to be my simplified factor and my solution to my problem. Okay, let's try another one. This one is a little bit more complex because you notice that my trinomial that I'm given is actually a trinomial with a coefficient that is greater than 1. These are always going to take a little bit of extra um, energy to work on. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So I'm going to multiply 8 times negative 5 to give me negative 40. And then I'm going to try to find... Um, numbers that multiply to give us negative 40 and that add to give me negative 3. So I have negative 8 and 5. So I'm going to go ahead and break this down into 8m squared. And I'm going to break that negative 3 um, down into negative 8m plus 5m. And then I'm going to carry that negative 5 down. Okay. So again, we have to now go ahead and put those together. So I'm going to go ahead and group those together. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out an 8m, be left with an m minus 1. And then I'm going to pull out a positive 5, and I'm going to be left with an m minus 1. So my two factors are going to be my repeated factors, m minus 1, and what's left over, 8m plus 5. Okay, at this point, all that work was just done to factor out the numerator. So those two factors create the numerator. Now I'm going to divide it by my m minus 1. At this point, I need to determine my excluded values. So m cannot equal positive 1. That's my excluded value. Now I'll go ahead and cancel, 
m minus 1 and m minus 1. And I am left with the factor 8m plus 5. And I am finished. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Getting a little bit more complex now. They look challenging, but wait till you see. It's not too bad. <coughs> let's go ahead and let's first start by factoring everything we possibly can. So it looks like we're going to start with the trinomial here in the numerator. So as you can see, I am multiplying these two rational expressions. Okay, let's go ahead and factor it. I'm going to factor this into n plus 6 and n minus 4. That's just the numerator of what I circled. I'm going to divide that by n plus 6. And then I'm going to multiply it by, the other two cannot be simplified at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. Now, when I multiply these, essentially I'm just multiplying the numerators by the denominators. <coughs> or the numerators and then the denominators. So if I multiply the numerators, I have n plus 6, n minus 4, and n plus 1, all being multiplied. In my denominators, I have n plus 6, and I have n minus 4. So I just kind of smush them together. At this point, I need to go and determine my excluded values. So my excluded values, n cannot equal negative 6, and n cannot equal positive 4. All right, let's go ahead and cancel now. n plus 6 and n plus 6, n minus 4, n minus 4. And I am left with a factor of n plus 1. And that is my final answer. Okay, let's try one with division now. <clears throat> now, division uh, basically is, I mean, it's just like dividing um, regular fractions. So let's go ahead and try this one. All right, let's go ahead and factor this. All right. My numerator in my first expression is going to remain as 3n. My denominator, let's go ahead and factor him. I could pull out a 3n there, and I would be left with n minus 10. Okay, I'm going to divide that by 4 divided by. Now I need to go ahead and factor um, this trinomial. So it looks like I need two numbers that multiply to give you negative 60 and that add up to give you negative 4. So I'm going to say negative n minus 10 and um, n plus 6. Okay, at this point, now I need to do my division. I'm going to use the, um, the trick keep, change, flip. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep my original fraction. I'm going to change my operation to multiplication, and I'm going to flip my second fraction. All we're using right now are fraction rules. That's it. Okay, if I multiply those, I'm basically just smushing them together. That's it. You can see that I have a 3n and a 4. That's going to create a 12n and n minus 10. Okay, let's go ahead and find my excluded values at this point now that I've divided. n is not going to equal 0, and n is not going to equal positive 10. I got that from my first factor and my second factor. So now let's go ahead and cancel. I have n minus 10 and n minus 10, and this time I have 3n over 12n. So whenever I simplify that, I'm actually going to simplify that. Um, I can simplify the n's. The n's are going to go away. And 3 divided by 12, well, that's just going to be 1 fourth. So really, I'm left with 1 over 4, and then I have n plus 6. So that's going to simplify down into n plus 6 divided by 4. And that is going to be my simplified answer to this long division problem. Okay, and that is it. That's all we have for rational expressions.